watching this, you've most likely learned how to walk and you've most likely learned how to ride a bike. And when you learn those two things, what did you do a lot of? That's right, crashing and falling. You stumbled, you fell down, you scraped your knees, you made hundreds and hundreds of mistakes on the way to mastering those two skills. Now there's two things I'd like to point out. First, these mistakes, these crashes and falls were totally necessary in the learning process. Nobody's ever learned to ride a bike and nobody's ever learned to walk without falling down. In order to figure it out, you had to make mistakes. Second, these mistakes were celebrated. Somebody in your life, your mother, your friend, your brother, was there cheering you on, was there celebrating the mistakes, was there telling you to get back up and to pedal faster and to try it again. This is a highly effective but very straightforward approach to learning. You try to walk or you try to ride a bike. You fall down and you crash. You celebrate the mistake. You learn from the mistake and then you do it again. And this is how we learn lots and lots of things when we're young. However, somewhere down the road this changes and there's a shift. There's a shift from celebrating the mistakes, from making lots and lots of big and glorious mistakes, from leaning into situations that are going to make us make more mistakes. We shift from this to punishing mistakes, becoming embarrassed or ashamed of mistakes, to avoiding any situation where we might make mistakes. In his amazing book, Self Renewal, John Gardner talks about this shift. One of the reasons why mature people are apt to learn less than young people is that they are willing to risk less. Learning is a risky business and they do not like failure. In infancy, when the child is learning at a truly phenomenal rate, he is also experiencing a shattering number of failures. Watch him. See the innumerable things he tries and fails and see how little the failures discourage him. With each year that passes, he will be less blithe about failure. By adolescence, the willingness of young people to risk failure has diminished greatly. And all too often, parents push them further along the road by instilling fear, by punishing failure, or by making success seem too precious. By middle age, most of us carry in our heads a tremendous catalog of things we have no intention of trying again because we tried them once and failed, or tried them once and did less than our self-esteem demanded. According to Gardner and lots of great research on growth mindset, this shift from wanting to learn and wanting to grow and wanting to get better to worrying about how we look, wanting to fit in and wanting to be perfect puts a huge damper on our abilities to learn and grow. But where does this fear of failure and desire to look good come from? There are two sources that are the driving force behind this shift. First, there's some external forces at play. How we're praised, what's rewarded, what's punished at school and in sports and at home. In a really important study, Carol Dweck and her colleagues actually discovered some amazing insights about feedback. So they gave hundreds of students a really, really easy test. And after the test, half of the students were praised for their abilities. So they said, wow, you're so smart at this. Now the other half was praised for their effort or the process. And they said, wow, you must have worked really hard at this. After this one sentence of feedback, some, some interesting things started to happen. First, they presented all of the students with a choice for their next test. They could either take a harder version or they could take another easy version of the test. Now I think we'd all agree that the harder option would be a better opportunity to learn and grow. However, the crazy thing was 67% of the group that was praised for their abilities chose to take the easier test while 92% of the group that was praised for their effort chose to take the harder version. Now this is no joke. This is like black and white, night and day. Now let's unpack this a bit. Why do you think that nearly 70% of the abilities group took the easy way out? You got it. 
because they wanted to look smart again. The progression goes, student takes the test, student gets praise for being smart, student wants to look smart again, and their main focus shifts to how they look. Of course 67% of them are going to take the easy test. They want to look good. On the other side, 92% of the effort group took the hard one because instead of worrying about how they look, they were focused on putting in effort and taking on the challenge. The next part of the study is even more compelling. This time, they gave all of the students a hard test. And during this challenge, Dweck noticed that the group that was praised for their abilities quickly got frustrated and had a tendency to give up early. While the effort group actually enjoyed the challenge and worked harder and longer. Which group do you think got more from this opportunity? The effort group did. No doubt about it. This is key. Both groups were presented with the exact same challenge and opportunity to grow. One group missed out because of the type of praise that they received. The praise that shifted their focus to how they look. The other group took advantage of the opportunity and got way more out of it because instead of worrying about how they look, they were focused on putting in effort and taking on a challenge. And it all goes back to the 